Thomas Gruskin is a former detective investigator with the New York City Police Force. I spoke to him about this issue, and I asked him why we don't see such tough gun legislation in countries like the United States. We have a two-party system, and there's a lot of different negotiations that have to go into any change in any law, especially gun control, especially in a presidential year where it's become a hot-button issue. Of course, when it comes to tough measures, Germany isn't alone. I want to get your thoughts on a couple of other countries confronted with mass shootings. Uh, there were two separate school shooting massacres in Finland in 2007 and 2008. Today, if you want a firearm, you have to prove that you are an active member of a regulated shooting club. Before you can get the gun, you have to undergo a police interview, show that you have a proper gun storage unit, and you have to pass an aptitude test. They're not saying we're taking your guns away. These are just measures that you have to go through. Why can't something like that pass in the United States? I think first we have to concentrate on a real confirmed background check and how we're going to control who gets guns. And then how we're going to control the people who have guns, are we going to at all monitor them? So you have the Lando shooter, the crosshairs of an investigation of the FBI or local police, do they then have the right, based on law, to go in and take the guns for the safety of that person as well as other people. Australia, lawmakers there after 1996 uh, passed sweeping gun control legislation after the Port Arthur measure massacre, I should say. Now, the measure outlawed automatic, semi-automatic rifles as well as pump-action shotguns. They had a nationwide gun buyback program that netted more than 600,000 weapons turned into authorities. And the Australian prime minister at the time thought perhaps he might get bounced from office. That didn't happen. He stayed in office and served for some time after. So the dynamic here in the United States, it seems lawmakers seem to fear that there will be blowback on gun measures, even when opinion polls show that most Americans are in favor of tighter gun control laws. Uh, in fact, support for background checks and other measures debated by the Senate right after the Orlando shootings, right about 90 percent. Uh, help us make sense of this. Well, as a former New York City police officer who did have guns pointed at them, was at the scenes of shootings, I am all in favor of stricter gun control. It's just how we're going to control it. And now you're dealing with two political parties, again, hot button issues during a political year, who have their different sides. I personally don't see any need for an AK-47 in anyone's hands. We, you know, we're past the days of when the Constitution was passed and what our forefathers and our founding fathers deemed as gun control or, or basically as the right to bear a weapon. The weapons have become much more sophisticated. So moving down the road, I think we have to look at what's happened in this country and around the world in the countries you cited and decide which is the better way to control guns and who has them and control different people who have guns, as I said, who come under investigation or start suffering from mental illness. Researchers at Arizona State University in Northwestern came out with a report in 2015. Their study showed that mass killings involving firearms occur approximately every two weeks in the United States, while school shootings occur on average monthly. Still, inaction in Congress. So is perhaps the approach wrong? Instead of targeting guns, which so many say is protected by the Second Amendment, should they be going after or limiting control of the sale of ammunition? And I was checking one site online touting sales of these large magazines saying, quote, for the past three decades, 30 round stick mags have been the norm for AR-15s. And you were just talking about these weapons. They have magazines with huge amounts of ammunition. I, listen, as a police officer who used to carry a Glock 9 on duty with 15 shots, one in the chamber, cap capable of firing, I guess, 16 shots, should I need to protect myself or someone else, I don't believe in large magazines except for law enforcement and security and investigation professionals anywhere in the world. With that said, I think that that's part of what we have to look at going forward to control guns and ammunition in this country. I don't believe that you have to control how many boxes someone can buy because one box can do as much damage as two boxes in the wrong hands. So it's a matter of how we're going to control the guns that go into people's hands and then how we're going to control to make sure that no one with, you know, with the wrong intentions gets a gun.